What's up guys, Pot Boy Pigs for life here, and today we are starting our brand new Planet Zoo playthrough, which is called Samurai Sanctuary. Now as you can tell by both the name of the zoo and a little bit of what you can see up ahead, this zoo is heavily inspired by East Asian culture, with a little bit of medieval Europe culture. Um, and I took a lot of inspiration from the Kung Fu Panda movies. Now, I mentioned this in a previous video, but I love the Kung Fu Panda movies, especially the second one. The second one is by far the best Kung Fu Panda movie, in my opinion. Um, and you guys will see what I mean in a minute. But first, how about a tour? So right here is the guest entry point, which I never noticed it in this much detail before. So guests walk in, they walk through this gate and into a very rustic Chinese village. Now this took a lot of inspiration from the Valley of Peace in all three of the Kung Fu Panda movies where the main characters live and go about their daily lives. Um, now, if I go into drone mode, um, you can see that this is a giant enclosure which will be for Japanese macaques and red crown cranes. Um, so, I went a little bit ahead with this exhibit, adding like all sorts of trees and rocks and climbing stuff for the monkeys. Um, and honestly, in my opinion, it just looks great. And you can see that both pools of water are heated up because the Japanese macaques really like to bathe in those hot springs around volcanoes in Japan. Um, and in case you weren't able to tell already, yes, this is a voiceover. Um, I, for whatever reason, my mic wasn't on, so it didn't pick up any of my voice. So, as you can see throughout the exhibit, there's loads of trails um, with loads of, like, scenic views. There's all sorts of, like, rocks and shrines and climbing frames for the monkeys um, with loads of foliage, might I add. Um, and so, right over here, um, there's a little pathway going up the mountain, and at the very top, is a palace. So this palace is heavily inspired by Gongmen Palace in Kung Fu Panda 2. Um, and this is going to be the Siberian tiger enclosure because what better animal to rule this kingdom than the Siberian tigers? I mean, I guess you could put the lions here, but they don't really like the cold climate. Um, whereas the Siberian Tigers are perfectly tolerant with this climate. And so, going back down the mountain, there's loads of paths leading out of the city, but for the sake of the tour, we're going to take this path. And right over here, this is supposed to be like a military base, similar to the Jade Palace where all the Kung Fu masters and like the military personnel live and train. And this is going to be the Arctic Wolf enclosure because, you know, they live in packs and um, yeah, they'd be best suited for a royal army right outside of the city. Um, yeah, um, and so right over here, this is a smaller little village right outside the big city. This is Boroughville. So, um, right over here we have one, um, we only have one, um, enrichment item for the borough because there's very few animals that can use it. This is going to be for the European badger, um, but I also dug out some other burrows inside of the mountains for three more animals. Those will be the Eurasian lynx, the Arctic fox, and the Chinese pangolin. Um, and so then right over here we have a little mining excursion 
where they mine all sorts of resources. So like, um, there's like a little water tower and a sift. Um, I use some of the ice rocks as um, crystals. That um, trade center is supposed to be a mine entrance. There's some crates, some other mining tools. I think that's supposed to be the sift. And there is a wagon so that way they can carry their goods into the city. Um, now, our next part, it's not finished yet, but there is a lake. Um, and so the three animals that we will keep here are the beavers, the moose, and the Amor leopards. Um, and so it's not done yet, but hopefully we'll get it done on camera, which is great. Um, and so then hopping back onto the path, um, it's a very long path, so, um, yeah, what's great is that people can get, like, quite some exercise walking this trail. And so, yeah, it's a very long trail, but if you can vaguely see up ahead in the distance, there is a little gate, or, like, I think it's like a Tory gate. Um, yeah, but some sort of East Asian gateway, and right up ahead you can also see a giant ravine that separates the valley from the outside area and so you can see at the bottom of the ravine quite a drop but there's also pointy rocks at the bottom um and so yeah don't worry the railing should keep anyone safe um but right up ahead you see loads of bamboo and Right over here, um, I think the bamboo is quite the hint for what's about to come up next. This is the Panda Village, just like in Kung Fu Panda 3. So right up ahead, this, um, so right up ahead what you just saw to your right is the Panda Enclosure. Um, I already got a lot done. Um, with the panda enclosure, I just couldn't resist myself when making this zoo. Um, but the big idea is that the pandas are farmers, and they basically like grow their own food. Yep, you could get a much better view of the uh, um, gardens that the pandas have. Um, and so what's great is that we can use like some of the new tomato plants in the conservation pack. Um, and so these barns are supposed to be for, like, warmer climate animals, so one of them is going to be for the southern cassowary, and the other one will be for some babarusas and some Indian peafowl. Um, and now we have, like, other pastures for more livestock, so this one is going to be a walkthrough exhibit for, um fallow deer and so then this exhibit will be a pasture for bison and reindeer and then the last one will be for Shavalsky's horse Bactrian camels and if we're lucky enough we can fit some ibex in there as well I might switch them because one of them looks a lot larger and can house multiple animals um, but yeah that's pretty much the tour so let's get started with adding in the animals. All right, guys, so the first two exhibits that we're going to be doing is we're gonna be doing the mixed exhibit for the Japanese macaques, also called Japanese snow monkeys, and the red crown cranes. And then later in the time lapse, we will be doing the Siberian tiger palace. Now, I don't really have too many facts for these animals. But I just wanted to really quickly share a very important piece of advice for those of you who are going to start a YouTube channel. Always, always make sure that everything is working properly before you record. Um, so always make sure that your mic is working. Always make sure your system audio is on. Um, 
always double triple check that everything is working properly before you start recording because then something like this will happen um i managed to recover from this pretty well with the whole time lapse and the voiceover um but yeah don't make the same mistake that i did um so something very similar to this happened when I was recording the last episode of Recreating Hammond's Dream Season 2, which was the um, Lost World Chaos Theory, for those of you who haven't watched it. Um, which, by the way, has like over 150 views, so thank you guys for all the views on that video. Um, but many of you guys probably could have told that um at the very end of the video when i was giving the final tour i didn't have system audio on um it wasn't the end of the world um especially since my mic was on but a lot of people could probably tell because i was showing the raptor enclosure when um the raptor like came over and let out a roar and you didn't hear anything well that was because system audio was off now like i said it wasn't the end of the world because you could still hear my voice um but this was like a big deal um especially since like i already made like the video and i saved and everything so i couldn't um re-record the episode um, that just would have been a waste of time. Um, but yeah, from now on, I am not making that same mistake again. No, no, you're making all new ones. I had to put that in because I was just talking about my Lost World Chaos Theory, and that was a quote from Lost World. Anywho, um, that's my little rant about making sure everything is working. Um, and yeah, let's get back to the time lapse.
Alright guys, so, um, yeah, I'd say that the first two habitats are pretty much good enough, in my opinion. In fact, good enough is just an understatement. These look great. I mean, I did get a lot done, like, before I started the playthrough, but, like, uh, all the flowers and the enrichment, it, like, just looks so alive, especially with the animals in it. Uh, and the Bengal tiger, no, not Bengal tiger, Siberian tiger palace. Man, just incredible. Um, this time I've got my mic on. Um... So yeah, um, alright, these guys are all set, so I think, to wrap up this video, we are going to do the Arctic Wolves, and you know what, I might also do some decorating around here, so, um, I'll probably just add in some, like, flowers and whatnot, um, and then I can surround it with, like, trees and rocks. So that way it doesn't look empty. Um, so yeah. Um,
man, this place looks so much better now that I added in all of these rocks. Like, it just looks so surreal. Like, wow. Like, this, this is what I like to call awesomeness. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not that creative when it comes to making up words to describe stuff. But, I mean, hey, what I'm trying to get at is that I really outdid myself here. Like, this looks incredible. Oh, and it's gonna look even more incredible with the snow. Oh, I love those little waterfalls that I added. Um, all the trees, like, it really makes the Arctic Wolf habitat look, like, even better with, like, this little hill and the little like the little lake going downwards like my goodness and with the snow it just looks so much more like so much more awesome up uh, this this is thumbnail worthy right here this right here is good for the thumbnail oh man uh, perfect thumbnail picture you got the wolves you got the palace you got the city this this just looks awesome like you can't get anything better than this like holy cow this is amazing um now really quickly I believe the Japanese snow monkeys had babies and we need to see them. Where does one find baby Japanese snow monkey? Child. Nani! <gasps> Look at it! Floating in thin air! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my gosh, this is so cute! On oh, the cute little squeaks that they make. So, so adorable. And look at them, they're all eating. It's so awesome. And there's none left for the babies. But you know what? There's probably other places they can get food. There's tons of, like, food enrichment and, like, food areas for them, I think. And also, just wondering, did the, um... Ooh, the, um, Red Crown Cranes had babies, too! <gasps> Look at this adorable little baby! Look at this little adorable baby! Oh, it's so cute! Oh, well, it looks like the guests are cool. Well, they should have brought a jacket with them. I like how in um one thing I noticed about Jurassic World Evolution 2 is that like the guests in the snowy environment are wearing like coats, heavy coats, as opposed to like anywhere else where they're just wearing like casual t-shirts. Um. But man, like, we've got some good stuff going on with this zoo. Like, already, like, with all of this, and like, and like, even the Siberian tigers, like, I didn't do much with the exhibit, but it still looks absolutely stunning. And like, just imagine what the rest of the zoo is gonna look like um which speaking of i think that that is going to conclude today's episode we got a lot done with the first three exhibits um and so next episode i think that it would be a good time to complete burrowville so we'll do european badgers eurasian lynx 
Arctic Fox, and Chinese Pangolins. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If so, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to see some more Minecraft Planet Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution 2 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.